IG, what's up? We lit. Daily Tref Talks, quarantine style, here at the Black House. Here, my echo. Tref Talks Daily, we're just two and a half days away from our final capital raise, less than two years under this company umbrella. Here we are at the Black House. You're live, King. Class A office space, commercial real estate development owned by the people. Tulsa Real Estate Fund, Peace Facebook. Make sure you guys hop on. As soon as you hop on, hit the share button, hit the like. Same thing for Instagram, Peace Family, the share. Super excited, man. We got high vibrations. Um, I might stand and sit through a little bit of this. Uh, I like to be kind of eye to eye with folks. But um, super exciting times for me, again, as an entrepreneur, uh, as an activist, as um, a, a servant leader in the community, super cool to be a, a part of all this energy we're creating in the culture where we're buzzing, um, where we're bringing on new partners, where Treff has been able to raise um, close to $10 million of capital now, getting closer and closer to Marcus Garvey's uh, record equivalent of $10.3 million raised. Um, you know, Marcus Garvey and the Black Star Line raised 800000 in 1920. 800000 in 1920 is equivalent to $10.3 million today, dollar for dollar with the inflation. Um, so it's cool for our fund to be close to um, catching and hopefully surpassing our ancestors, Zers with an S, because it wasn't just Garvey, there were thousands of people that invested in the Black Star Line company and movement. And with that company, they went and bought a fleet of ships. They, they, they began to spin off other companies, the Black Mercers Corps, uh, their own newspaper, factories corps, three schools, right? So multiple businesses were created in the Black Star Line, legendary capital raise. Here we are, 2020, during COVID-19. Um, again, they were raising capital and operating in the middle of the Spanish flu, the Spanish influenza. Um, here we are with a, with a local and current pandemic um, but here we are at the Black House getting ready to open soon. As soon as we feel that it is going to be safe for our members and our leasees to come back and our tenants to come back, we're going to open the Black House back up. But right now, under the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, as I'm wearing a little bit of our merch representing Treff Life, uh, we have created the first Black Home Real Estate Crowd Fund in the history of America. Um, you know, just doing the good work and fighting the fight. Not because we had to, but because we had to. Right, so it's not that we had to, any of us, from a selfish perspective, none of us had to be a part of this company from a perspective of our own selfish intent. Um, where there was a have to for me to found and launch this vehicle, not knowing what was gonna happen when I put this idea out to the world. It was pertinent for me to be obedient to God's will, of me obedient to Allah's will, obedient to the vision that God gave us for me as a messenger to help promote economic unity by offering a transparent vehicle, a 21st century vehicle, and a model, a blueprint that we all can duplicate. Like, listen, my model, we can duplicate. We can duplicate this model and say, well, if Jay can start off as the, the second largest equitable black owned group economics focused company in history, well, what can we do after Jay? What can we do multiplying that with all of our talents and gifts? We should be able to have 20, $50 million funds in the next five years. Not saying me. I'm not even saying under my leadership. Trust me, I don't even want that weight right now. I'm just talking about us putting our best foot forward with a proven model. We should be able to have 20, $50 million funds running around the country, controlling our own assets, and really not having to seat at someone else's table, but creating our own building to have our own table to have our own seat at on our own land that's freedom that's entrepreneurship that's independence um at 6 p.m eastern today i'm gonna be on my brother sean king i'm hopping back on ig live i'll be joining sean king's page political activist uh researcher news reporter historian sean king uh, I'm going to be on his page at 6 p.m. Eastern. So I'm going to be hopping off of here early. I want all y'all to head over to my live where I'll be with King Sean. And we're going to be talking about the price of freedom. As we look to be proactive in creating solutions for our community, 
and not begging or relying for anyone to come solve our problems that we can solve for ourselves and that God gave us the gifts to solve for ourselves. Um, as we do that, we know that it is, it's gonna take organization, infrastructure, and work for us to do that. And we know it's gonna be risk in doing that. We know it's gonna be reputational risk. We know it's gonna be all of what we've seen our ancestors go through um, and what leaders go through and what progressive movements go through. Um, there's always gonna be detractors when you are disrupting the status quo. The status quo says we go to school, get good grades, go get a job, hopefully a good government job, right? The status quo says that we don't own our own office buildings. We don't own a black house. We don't buy back the block and own two, over two blocks and make in Georgia of 98 rental units. We don't go out and fund millions to black owned developers, right? That's the status quo. The status quo says a black owned company doesn't raise capital from independent people and then go raise or go de uh, deploy that capital through development and funding to other black developers. That's the status quo. We are a disruption to the status quo. The status quo says you don't build a $12.8 million real estate uh, stabilized value of your real estate portfolio in under two years off an $8.75 million raise with $5 million of assets free and clear, right? Meaning no mortgage on $5 million of our assets. We have leverage and equity in those assets. Status quo says we don't get that done coming from the ground up against all odds, right? So our company, Tref Life, Tulsa Real Estate Fund, is a status quo disruptor in like every movement or every leader or every anything. Anytime someone has bucked against the, the status quo, the system, and not just the government system, the societal system, that says we gotta operate in this box. Oh, you wanna step outside the box? Who do you think you are? Who do y'all 10,000 plus investment partners, who do y'all 8,600 founders on this wall, who do y'all think y'all are? To buy a 2.6 acre campus, 30,000 square foot building, five minutes from the world's busiest airport, two miles from Tyler Perry Studio and a qualified opportunity zone. Who do y'all think y'all are? Who do y'all think y'all are putting legacy center on your floor mat? Your legacy starts here on your interior decor. Who do y'all think y'all are? Who do y'all think y'all are in an OW girly conference room? Who do y'all think y'all are with Malcolm X and Marcus Garvey on the walls? The Million Man March and Minister Farrakhan on the walls? With Sean King, Tamika Malley on the walls? With Marin Jackson on the walls? Who do y'all think y'all are with Trayvon Martin on your walls? Who do y'all think y'all are? We treff life. It's the Black House. This is what independence and what freedom feels like. And tonight at 6 p.m., I'm going to be building with my brother, Sean King, and we're going to be talking more about the cost of freedom. That's why I, I understand my position. Like, I'm a disruptor. I don't have a boss. I don't have an office of plantation. And I created a level of financial freedom for myself which I didn't need Tulsa Real Estate Fund to do it all. Tulsa Real Estate Fund was my contribution back to the culture to say, hey, nobody's gonna create a group economics model, so we gonna just do donations and GoFundMes and Kickstarters and clutch your fleets forever, ever, for real, in real life. So black people are gonna complain about being last in last place in the wealth gap. We're gonna complain about our communities being gentrified. We're going to honor and reverence Black Wall Street 100 years ago, honor and reverence Marcus Garvey and the UNIA and the Black Star Line, honor and reverence Noble Drew Ali, honor and reverence the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Mr. Farrakhan, Mr. Malcolm X, Dr. King, who was on economics. Dr. King talked about, it is, one thing to, to, it is one thing to tell a man to pick himself up by the bootstraps, but it is a cruel joke to tell a man to pick himself up by the bootstraps and he don't got no boots. Dr. King talked about reparations. Dr. King talked about how they were giving away land to European farmers when we were coming out of our enslavement in Jim Crow and we couldn't get any of the land. So we can highlight and talk about those things, but are we gonna be pro progressive and proactive, innovative enough and intentional enough to go create a vehicle that allows us to pull capital together to go out and shoot our shot? I'm not a sitter, I'm not a talker. I'm a walker and I'm a doer. So I couldn't sit back knowing that I have the financial acumen, I have the hustle, I have the energy, 
I have the real estate acumen and experience to be able to try something. This isn't, this isn't an, an attempt. It's a try because it was not done before. To pioneer something, to trailblaze something, to do and offer something and risk the dollars, resources, time, and reputation to put something together that has not been done before. That many are scared of because of the exposure. That many are scared of because of the reputational risk. That many are scared of because of the historical risk of what happens to leaders in our community and organizations in our community when they show black excellence, black power, and black economic progression. Many are scared of that. So being obedient to God's will for my life, I knew I had a responsibility to offer up and to be able to bring an opportunity for us to try something that we had not previously done nor even currently have or had any plans for in regards to group economics, economic unity, cooperative economics, Kujama, they say in Kwanzaa. So this principle exists and has existed within our culture, within our village, and through our ancestors. It's, it's, this principle of it takes a village to save the village. It takes a village to raise a village. It takes the village to fund the village. This principle has existed within our DNA since ancient times. But the level of Jim Crow and Willie Lynch and self-hate and trauma and demoralization and the lack of dignity and the lack of education, lack of exposure, and the demoralization, dehumanization of our people has made it harder and harder for us to collaborate and make strategic, bodacious, innovative, and independence-minded moves. We struggle against our own independence and we find every way not to leave the plantation or every way not to take the risk of the Underground Railroad or every way to not participate because it is much easier, I swear to you, it's a fact. It is much easier not to participate. It is much easier on your family, on your wife, on your kids, on your personal health to stay out of our fight, to stay out of our calls for liberation, for advancement, for empowerment. It's much easier to fall back, I swear to you. To fall back is much easier. But we're not looking for the easiest road travel, we're looking for the right and correct and the called road travel. We're looking for the necessary road travel. Many of us were empowered when Malcolm X said, you know, we're gonna have our liberty, we're gonna have our rights, we're gonna have our justice by any means necessary. Everybody loved that line, any means necessary. But as I'm gonna be talking about at 6 p.m. Eastern with Sean King on IG Live, only on Instagram, me and Sean King. What's the cost of freedom? We say by any means necessary. We say by any means necessary, but are we really willing to put up any means? Are we willing to endure any means? And so for me, I just live a life of being who and making moves in which I believe I should make. Like what I would tell someone else to do, I believe it's my responsibility to do it. So I can't say, man, this is what Jay-Z should do. This is what Oprah should do. This is what LeBron James should do. This is what Tyler Perry should do. This is what Floyd Mayweather should do. Well, I got to first ask as, as I point forward, I got one finger pointed forward, but I got three pointing back to me. So what should Jay Morrison do? How can I complain about other leaders and what they haven't done or should do or what I think they should do? That's maybe not what they're called to do. Maybe they had a different calling. So it's my responsibility to do what Jay Morrison is supposed to do and what he got to do. And that's what we do. So uh, again, Tulsa Talk uh, every day. The Wednesday, the 29th is our last and final capital raise. So we're letting everyone know about our company and the opportunity. You guys can own shares of our company, own shares of the Black House, and be on the next legacy wall, right? This is our founder's wall of our first 8,600 investors. But everyone else that invests by April 29th, midnight, if your investment is accepted, you're qualified, you will be on our back 
legacy wall of our phase two development here at the Black House. So I want everyone in consideration of your investment to please make sure you're, uh, you're researching and you're getting the right advice on your investment. Our disclosures are, on, on, are online, investwithtreff.com. But should you invest, partner, be a co-owning partner of our company, meaning you have interest and equity in our company and all the assets under our portfolio are all part of your family legacy once you become a partner. But you also will have an opportunity for your name on the legacy wall in phase two of our development. So I want to give everybody that opportunity. And the website is investwithtreff.com. It's in my Instagram bio. It's an opportunity for all of us to participate in some form of commercial real estate ownership, buying back the block, lending out capital, right? We've created nearly 100 jobs in the last, in under two years. Majority of those jobs have went to Black-owned firms, minority developers, contractors, investors, and staff members in real life. We raised over eight million seven hundred fifty thousand in capital. Built up a stabilized portfolio, projected portfolio value of twelve point eight million. We own multiple assets, funded multiple developers, black-owned development companies, and we are, from our reports this morning, we're about a little less than a half a million shy from surpassing. I just want to ask that question: How close are you to Marcus Garvey's in the Black Star Lines record? Well, we are about. Uh, as of this morning, $460,000 shy of passing Garvey's, surpassing Garvey's, honorable Marcus Garvey's record in the Black Star Line, just as the largest Black-owned company to successfully execute equitable group economics ever in American history. That's our goal right now. And then we're going to go to work. After the capital raise on the 29th, everybody says, what's next? What do you mean, what's next? More work. Just because it's a capital raise and we're public and it's all this energy right now, don't you know that every single day, morning through night, this is on my mind, on a team's mind, on our staff upstairs, well, who should be upstairs, we're working remotely. We go do more work, we go fund more deals, we finish phase two of our development, we go empower our community, we offer financial services, we teach the community, we bring in our young, we bring in our old. We have business trainings here, digital business classes here. We have vision board parties here. We incubate the community for financial empowerment and grow fund deals, build credit, give strategy, advice, flip more houses, buy more blocks. That's what's next. What's next is more work. The capital raise is just the, the fuel to the vehicle. Cap, Don People said capital is the fuel for entrepreneurship and real estate investment. It is. You need capital. So now with that, we're going to eye this current market post-pandemic. And we're going to see what opportunities lie for us in the market and continue to participate in deals. We're going to continue to stabilize our making Georgia a complex, waiting to refinance that so we see where the lenders are at this market. We're going to continue to fund developers and different developments. We're going to continue to operate and really grow this Black House Legacy Center brand because part of our vision is to have a Legacy Center Black House in every major metro city in America where it's a one-stop shop, business incubator in a box, media hub, media center, event space, empowerment space for our people. With that swaggy and that sexy and that is polished and sophisticated in all things black excellence. That's the vision, is to build out this legacy center model, to build and our, develop our other assets. Every member, every tenant that has a tenant or business here at the legacy center in our opportunity zone that business can qualify to be an opportunity zone qualified business to receive outside capital from the capital markets looking for opportunity zone tax discounts. Every business here gets that. We have virtual address services here, shared working spaces here starting at 99 a month. Social service. So we have a host of work and things to do. Black Wall Street wasn't built overnight, nor was the Black Star Line or UNIA. I mean, it was wrong, nor will the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. It won't be overnight. Man, we're working. And I look forward to getting back to my best gift and empowering the community out of this enterprise, out of this headquarters, out of this class A office space that we own, that we collect the rents together, get proper share with some of the businesses together, all that from the Black House, the media services, offering studios and media, film, studio space, media space, podcast space, green screen room, psych walls, all our 20,000 square foot back of the building. So all that is next. Let me take a couple of questions and we'll get out of here.
if I got a six o'clock with Sean King on Instagram, chat is up. Trying to get the Facebook chat up real quick. And I'll go to IG as well. Again, investwithtref.com. I don't know what's going to chat. All right. All right, I got you guys in the chat. Let's see Tref in my phone. We'll take some questions. Investwithtref.com by the 29th. Details on the website. All right, so great question. One of the common questions, when do investors see dividends? Investors see dividends, one, after our capital raise because it would be risking compliance to keep raising capital and offer distributions per our council's advice. So after the capital raise, we stop raising capital. So when we do make distributions, it is not confused that we are paying distributions or dividends off of new capital that came in as a Ponzi scheme, right? So after capital raise ends, then we start our progression towards distribution of dividends. They're paid as any quarter that our business, from our rentals, from our flips, from the money that we've loaned out, from our assets that we have collateral on, as those assets come back through liquidity events and sales and refinances and exit strategies, through those profits, we're profitable in any quarter, we've been paid dividends, right? So we just pay upon profitability. Understanding that we are developing commercial assets. So it takes time, some long-term investment, but we are uh, on our way and it's in our purview. Um, let's see, you do a lot, King. Talk about when, invest, uh, when investors start making money. I just explain that, thank you, same person. Um, Okay, I see you again. I answered the question, King. Uh, let's see, who else we got in the chat? Let me see my, my, my Facebook chat real quick. Hey, King Gene, where'd the Facebook chat go? You gotta hit that little chat bubble. It's not up here no more. Oh, there it is. All right. Now where's my mouse at? All right, let's go back to the Facebook chat real quick. Come on, guys. Let's see, investwithtref.com. Let's see, let's see. Uh, let's see, all right. I'm gonna just help you out real quick because you just, all you wanna talk about. Listen, I love, we want, we want any questions in the spirit of building. We with that. Good energy and collaboration to build. No more questions, Gene, what, they, they left, did I mess them up? I don't know what happened. Uh, you know, see it. Basically, somebody says, can we get some Tref gear? You see that one? Oh, Tref gear, yeah, we're working on that. That's next. Okay. Right now, this, this daggone, these buildings done. Close. All right. Let's see any more questions before we got out of here. Do we invest in technology? Yeah, we block them. We good. I don't hear people say, let's see. Let's see, why do you say that though? I'm just curious. Where are we investing at? Uh, our personal investments, we have investments here in Georgia. We invest around the country, but we also fund deals all over the country. So we have, uh, we have opportunities in Nashville, in Louisiana, in Atlanta, in New Jersey, uh, in Cincinnati. Um, so we've been in several different states. Minimum investment, $500, that's correct. Uh, Let's see. I see a lot of comments, not too many questions. <laughs> Y'all funny. It's like he built the community first for everyone in his pockets? <laughs> nah, we all build it. We're gonna, we gonna build the community and break bread. That's the goal. Um, okay, transparency is important. Can you talk about how you will communicate to your investors? Great question. So we have a phenomenal communications and investor relations team. And so how we communicate with our investors and our investment partners, our partners, co-owning partners, they get a monthly newsletter that breaks down the monthly activity of the fund, uh, state of the assets, what's going on next, anything important happening to clients. So you do get a monthly newsletter. We also do this Tref Talks digital communication, question and answers, and we usually do phone calls every first Tuesday. So the partners can call in on first Tuesdays and ask questions then as well, right? So you got phone calls, you have constant email communication, you have newsletters, you have annual reports, annual filings, one used done by the SEC, all of which gives you clarity into what we're doing within our company. 
So at the end of every year, we do a financial audit. We can see the whole financial audit of our company and a third party independent auditor's opinion on the fund. So I want to give you all that. So there is um, much opportunity for communication and transparency. And we have a great investor relations team. You guys can email or call on um, any time during business hours. Great question, Queen. All about that transparency life. That's how we win. Somebody said I have investment in Visa and it took almost a year to see a dividend. If you don't understand investing, don't invest. I agree, if you don't really fully get it, don't invest in the company, right? I want you guys to get it. Um, you know, we are a new company. A company like Visa has been around, has billions of dollars, has been around for years. And so instead it took them a year to get a dividend for a billion dollar company that's been around forever. We are a, two, a less than two year old company. And so, you know, we have to understand that as we invest, right? We don't invest in the stock market, no. Um, we do quarterly financial reports. Thank you for that question. Quarterly financial reports. And sometimes in our monthly newsletter, we put financials in as well. But we definitely do quarterly financial reports. Uh, let's see. Love, love, love. Gene, what time we got? 5.38? All right, cool. So... Mr. Can you invest more at a later time? Uh, there will be no more investment after 429. After 429 midnight, uh, that'll be the last time for any partnership opportunity from the fund. I got some on Facebook. And thank you everybody who is a partner currently, whether it be from a year ago, two years ago, current partner from a week ago, Appreciate your partnership. It's family business, right? That's what we look at this as family business. Uh, is there an extension on that 500? There is not an extension um, on the opportunity past uh, midnight, uh, April 29th. Do investors have an upper hand of trying to personally purchase a home? Uh, it doesn't help with any uh, home purchase per se. Uh, can TREF members get access to funding for startups? Um, TREF access to funding for um, real estate opportunities, some business opportunities um, you could submit to, you know, to our fund after the 29th. Um, will I say upper hand? No, but you will get consideration. Let's see any more in there. Partner in here. You can't add more once you invest past the 29th. We took, right? Let's see. I'm doing like five phones at once. We currently have, um, on estimate, a little over 10,000 partners and members in the company. There behind me is 8,600 members of our, um, our founding members, but currently a little over 10,000 members. I would consider a Class A building um, if it made sense in regards to uh, diversification of our portfolio or the equity opportunities or some other mitigating factors. But I mean, class A usually isn't going to give you the best returns, highest returns. Uh, there's no, so drip program. Uh, someone said, well, if capital reach was projected IR, uh, ROI. So the ROI is a preferred return of 8% is cumulative, means it adds up every year. Our projections is a 8.7% IRR, internal rate of return for every fund member, meaning every year that your capital is invested, we project that by 2024, if we liquidate the, fu the fund, you would be entitled to an 8.7% internal rate of return, meaning you made 8.7 on average every year on year, um, as if we uh, liquidate the fund by 2024. If not, we'll continue to pay dividends and we'll keep our assets. Our goal is to own. Once we sell, we have no more power, no more ownership, right? Which has been an issue in our community is we want to cash out everything. Our community wants the control and the power of other communities, but we want to cash out unlike them, right? So we're going to have to make a disciplined decision to hold some of our assets. Uh, where you can invest at? Everyone can invest at investwithtref.com. That's investwithtref.com, T-R-E-F, uh, or TulsaRealEstateFund.com. 
and I don't mind repeating these things over and over again. I'm the fund manager. It's my job to make sure there's clarity. It's my job to have a successful capital raise. It's my job to be the responsible fiduciary, responsible party of our entire fund operations. It's a big responsibility. And so if it means I gotta repeat myself 17,000 times, then 17,000 times I will for the sake of my partners and the success of this company. Like that's the work I'm willing to put in for us. I took on this responsibility to be the leader of the organization, so therefore I must lead. Uh, let's see. Do you dispense the dividend straight to account or do we, how do we receive it? Well, right now, dividends would be paid through check, um, but we are working on an electronic version so we don't have to spend money on mail and waste capital we could actually disperse as profits. So we don't want to use our profits on mail, so we are looking at a way to distribute dividends electronically. Uh, somebody said, because you're a man leaving a legacy. It's a fact. My legacy's on this. All right, so what I'm going to do as we wrap up, sorry guys, here, you won't be able to participate on Facebook. Uh, Facebook, I'm going to be giving these guys a little bit of the founders wall before we dip out any of our founders so they can see their names. Uh, so I'm going to do a little founders wall tour. Thank you, Facebook, for logging on. Everybody, go check out my interview tonight with Sean King on my Instagram, 6 p.m. Eastern. Sean King, The Cost of Freedom. We'll be tuning in for that. And we're going to give you guys a little bit of a look at the founders wall. Anybody's name that might be up there? King, can you look for Brittany Lewis? Queen Brittany, Brittany Lewis. Yeah, yeah. Facebook, shout them out. Brittany Lewis. All right. Nikki Bees. I can't go here, Brittany. Let me go over here. Brittany Lewis, Brittany Lewis, let's see. B-R-I. Brittany, Brittany Lewis, you hit. She on there? She's over there, we got her. <laughs> we got you on the wall, Queen, we got you on the wall. Any of my J's, here you go. Check this out, guys. Come with this. Talk legacy work, legacy work. Everywhere on the best spot, April 29th, will be on our legacy wall in phase two in the back. Join our legacy wall. All right, Kings 545, we're going to stop this stream. Right. Let me say goodbye and stop this too. All right, guys. So it's 545. Again, I'm hopping back on IG at 6 p.m. to get it with Sean King. Again, investwithtref.com, link in bio for anyone that wants to be a co owning partner. In the Black House, our multi-million dollar portfolio, the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. We have an opportunity with Chase and Garvey in real life. There's group economics in real life. We have progress being made. Uh, thank you all for attending uh, and participating in, in our, our, our lives, man. And, and, and for you all participating in our company, even more importantly, thank you for being a part of our company and this movement. And we'll continue to put in the work. I'll be live with Sean King at 6 p.m. Eastern. Thank you, Facebook. I'll see you guys at investwithtrep.com. Sean King, myself, IG Live, The Cost of Freedom, 6 p.m. Eastern tonight. Deadline for partnership opportunities, 429, Wednesday at midnight. Chase and Garvey, we're about $460,000 away from an epic capital raise that would essentially place us in the history books as the largest Capital raise, largest black owned company to, to execute successfully group economics through equity. So, so, so when I say equitably, I mean through equity, right? Everybody have an ownership, not a donation. So we'll be the largest black owned company in American history that successfully executed group economics for the purpose of redeveloping the community. That's facts. So I'll see y'all there, guys. Welcome to the company for everyone that's joining. Treff Life for Life is family business. Thanks, Jane. Peace. I'll see y'all at six. All right.